Room modes. Well, that's a favorite uh, word to be uh, battered around. And um, uh, what is a room mode, I guess, is the first thing. Um, a room mode is uh, sort of like a kid in a swing. Um, uh, at first, it doesn't exist. There's no swinging. And then you push and moves. And you push again, and you have to push in time. The right time and it moves swing moves more and then you push again and the swing moves more and you push again and you keep finally huge and okay that's like a room mode the speaker is the pusher the loudspeaker with the piston going in and out of the box the um, so the the piston goes forward creates pressure that pressure expands goes runs down to the end of the room bounces back when the when the when that pre positive pressure bounces back, the piston has moved back and pushes forward again. So now, the piston is adding more pressure to uh, some pressure that already exists because it from the prior push, and now that double pressure expands down the room, comes back, and the piston goes forward again. And now that triple pressure goes down the room and comes back and the piston goes forward again. So the piston's moving in and out in time with the wave as it expands out to the end of the room and back. And that's the simplest way. Um, the, uh, when you uh, are in a bathtub or looking at a bathtub and you kind of push the water up and down or slosh the water back and forth and you end up with a sloshing like that. Well, that's a standing wave too, except it's in water and it's in the bathtub. But that's a first resonance, first mode, standing wave. If you pushed faster and in a different way, you could actually get that water going like this in the bathtub. And that would be your second harm mode or second harmonic uh, of standing wave. Okay, now it takes time to build a standing wave, just like it takes time to get a, a child swing way up high swinging. You push a little bit and it moves a little bit. Then you push again in time and it moves more. And then you push again in time and it moves more. It takes time to pump up a standing wave. The amount of time it takes to pump it up, which is to get it as uh, loud as it's going to get, uh, equals the amount of time it takes for it to die out when you stop putting uh, 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 power to the speaker. And by the way, how come a standing wave doesn't get any louder than a certain loudness when the speaker is giving a certain amount of power? It's because the standing wave, the, the, the power being put into the standing wave equals the power being absorbed from the standing wave uh, in the room. The power that's absorbed from a standing wave in a room is proportional to the sound pr pressure. The pressure that the wave is putting on the walls. And so what happens is the pressure gets harder uh, and stronger and stronger and stronger until the energy absorption due to high pressure uh, rubbing on the walls, the energy absorption equals, you may say the power absorbed equals the power being delivered. And at that point the, the sound doesn't get any louder. Um, it takes about a second to a second and a half to build a standing wave up in a room. It takes about a second to a second and a half for the energy of a standing wave to die out in a room. Most of music is happening much faster than uh, the sounds are much more rapidly come and go. Now granted a plucked stand up string bass might, or bowed string bass might be pretty slow and actually be able to pump up a room mode. Uh, but most music comes and goes you know, four tone bits a second or something like that, tone pieces of tone a second, and the uh, room modes are never stimulated because the tone is never played long enough, a second and a half, to actually create the full standing wave. So, uh, so although standing waves are fun and they're a, a training building block for learning acoustics, in the real world, uh, in the musical world, uh, they're rarely stimulated.